You might be wondering why is there an M5 A1 Stewart sitting in front of us when the title says it's an M3. Well, for starters, they're relative to each other. And then for another, I find small kits like these quite interesting. So the main topic of this episode today would be Tamiya's old M3 Stewart. Now, it is worth noting that Tamiya has since released a newer version with updated parts and also other decals. So without further ado, let's get into Tamiya's M3 Stewart. Okay, so upon opening the box, here are the parts that would be greeting you. Two sprues, loose parts, two versions of the manual, vinyl tracks, and also a decal sheet. Now for the decal sheet, as you can see, they are relatively versatile in nature as you have quite a diverse number of, part of options. However, you would have to do some further research as to verify which units being depicted actually used this version of the Stuart. As I would be discussing later on, this isn't your typical Stuart version. As mentioned earlier, you have two versions of the instruction manual, one in Japanese and then also one in English. And it's a multi-folded um, manual information up here. Then the decal options behind, as you can see. Your first option would be C Company, it, which served in Tunisia. Another would be A Company which served in Europe. However, I read that this is fairly inaccurate as um, by the time they served in Europe, or at least this, the third armored served in Europe, they did not really have um, M3 stewards anymore. And they were outfitted with the updated stewards, which are the M5s. And then for this one, you have B Company of the British Army, and then also C Battalion of the Canadian Army. Again, more research is required for these other markings. Now for the tracks, you can see they are fairly simple and do have some parts to clean up. For attaching, you can see that the pegs are actually molded behind the front, so we don't have anything sticking out of the track pads. And once you join them together, you could probably apply um, super glue to that or CA, or melt it down. Either way, there's less cleanup you have to do on the surface. Now moving on to the main parts, you can see here the upper hull and then also lower hull piece. Putting them together and then comparing them, hold on. Comparing them to the M5, you can see that they are almost same in length. However, this kit, or the Mias M5, is actually shorter than the actual. So if it had um, an accurate dimension, this would per this kit, or the M5, should be a little longer than this M3. Now going back, you can see at the top hall, the Mia was not shy with the details. You have here all the bolts on the surface of the tank. And also here on the front glazes, even the hinges. And they did um, mold the um, side plate separately, even the front. So that gives you at least an in-depth detailing to how the Stuart looked. Also for this one, the front here, they also molded the um, panel where the sponsored machine gun would be sticking out of. Going around the rear, you could see also the back panels are molded separately. Now for the lower tub, fair amount of detail as well. Bolts and also the look of the suspension gear. Now for this sprue, there are mostly the major parts going around the upper hull of this Stuart. Now you have the hull pieces, the hull halves, and you can see right there that Tamiya did a fairly good job of 
doing the weld marks. However, once you put that together, do look out for seam marks. And then also, you, have, you would probably have to link the weld marks to those areas that were affected once you cleaned out the seam. Then as I mentioned earlier, here are the parts of the sponsons, well, parts that would depict the sponson machine gun mounting points. And then here are the side panels, or here's the side panel that would be mounted here on the side of the steward. And then these right here, these two, and then also these, they are the stowage bins that are located at the rear of the tank by the fender. Here's the top of the turret, and as you can see, the shape of the turret is quite different. Um, it's more like a horseshoe in nature. And this is the D39273 type cupola. And this is actually quite, um, well, not, well, not exactly rare, but they're not the more common versions used by the stewards. So you would have the hexagonal type of cupola or even the latter war period types. Here are the hatches for the TC's cupola. Here you have the TC, the air filter. Then also right here you have the headlight guards. As you can see, they're fairly thick. So you would have to probably file it down or replace it completely with either aftermarket parts or your own scratch built ones. Then also here you have the headlights and the siren, a bit heavy handed on the details, so you might want to modify that a little. The M3 Stewart has about five machine guns, two sponsons, one bow, one coaxial on the turret, and then also one um, supposedly for anti-aircraft purposes, and that's mounted on the TC's cupola. And unfortunately, all of them, well, at least their gun barrels, have the cooling holes molded outward and not inward. So you would have to actually um, modify these barrels or give it a cleaner, to give it a cleaner look or make it accurate or comp replace them completely with aftermarket parts. Then you have here the connection points for the air intake filters. And then also a shovel pioneer tool. The, these other parts right here are for the mantlet. And here is the 37 millimeter gun used by the steward. And again, basic detailing. So you would have to hollow out that barrel and clean up that line over here. So yeah, that's mostly it for this sprue. Now coming along to this end. You have most of the running gear, the road wheels, the suspension, the front panel, which is which goes here, and then also the trailing idler wheels and the drive sprockets. You have here the other panels that would be going around the tank. Then also right here you have the um, lower back panel, which goes here. And again, the rest of these are for the suspension gear. And yeah, that's that's it for this Tamiya M3 Stewart. Really not a lot of parts going on. It's a small kit and relatively simple to build. Now, um, in terms of in terms of accuracy, there are some parts that you would want. To modify and also change in order to get the correct look especially here with the um, mesh as you can see it's very um, basic and detailing not a lot of in-depth look right there as compared to this where it's given a bit more detail so you would have to probably replace this or at least try to detail it out even more but yeah um, it's simple, it's quick, or well, it's supposed to be a quick build. And I would recommend this for someone starting out with a hobby, or at least someone who just wants a quick build or a weekend build. 
So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a thumbs up. If you didn't, leave a thumbs down. And let me know down in the comments below what you think of this tank, what you think of the kit, or any feedback in general. And as always, stay safe, keep modeling, and until next time, goodbye.